So, as Nigeria roils with the tension of insecurity, violent attacks rise by 47% with nearly 7,000 people killed in the last six months alone. And the situation has continued to worsen with more kidnapped victims this year compared to last year, up by nearly 25%. According to a security report released by Beacon Consulting, most of the attacks were carried out by terror groups, bandits, ethnic militias and political thugs. But the report also accuses the security services of extrajudicial killings and violations of the law. Amid all this, elections are approaching and Nigerians, ravaged by insecurity, are hanging on hope that their votes will count and they'll be able to bring in a new, more responsive government. So, as we attempt to put insecurity in political perspective as 2023 approaches. I'm joined now in the studio by the chairman of the Senate Committee on the Army and senior member of the ruling APC party, Senator Ali Ndume. Thank you very much indeed, Senator. And for your patience, uh, listening to those people, because I wanted you to hear what they were saying. And, uh, and first of all, just condolences on the passing of your father. I understand he was a very prominent community leader. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. As we said, a gathering storm of insecurity uh, under the watch of your party, the APC government. So what's your reaction to what you've seen and heard so far on the program? Well, the situation is very unfortunate. I have listened to Carol and uh, what she went through. And I have also listened to the respected... Uh, uh, Reverend Father, Father George Hussani. And uh, I, I agree with most of the issues they said because the case of Carol is a first-hand experience. She was just um, relating what she went through. And uh, what uh, I also agree with Father, Reverend Father, for what he said and his position on, on some of these issues. The situation we find ourselves in the country is very, very unfortunate. And as you rightly said, uh, I don't like people sharing away from responsibility. And I also don't like the idea of um, discussing people or events. I prefer talking about the issues and then the ideas of how to get out of this because the matter of insecurity is not an issue that affects or discriminates, as you can hear. Uh, when, 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 when the insurgents, the bandits, they don't anywhere. They don't ask after your religion, tribe, or whatever before they either kidnap you, kill you, and all that. We were trying to put blames on here and there, but it's not like that. Mm. The, the bottom line is this high level of insecurity in this country at this time. It doesn't matter whether it was it's the, during the time of APC or PDP. I don't want to trade blames. But if I'm to do that, then as a politician, of course, I'll not blame myself. I'll blame the PDP. Mm. Because go and check the history of the insecurity. Who started it or when did it start? By the time PDP came into power in 1999, there wasn't any level of this insecurity. It was heightened during the regime of PDP. In fact, it's one of the reasons why they lost election. Because Nigerians have this belief or hope that when a general comes, mm. the issue of insecurity will be laid to rest. The issue of corruption will be laid to, you know, and then the infrastructural development, which are, are three key points, mm. will be top ahead. Unfortunately, uh, there's this English saying that wishes are not whatever. Yeah, if, if wishes were horses, men would ride to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> so if our wish as APC yeah. were horses, Nigeria would have been a developed country indeed. But, but I have to ask you this, though. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you're the um, chairman of the Senate Committee on the Army. Uh, what's it like for the army and the security uh, services to be faced by such huge security challenges? I understand they, they just don't have enough equipment. I yeah. mean, you were telling me that they're Russian bullets. Yeah. Uh, Carol said it is now, just only mm. uh, when she was, that's what she said is that they don't have enough manpower, not only in the, the army, 
but even the police. Mm. And let me add this, that this issue of internal security is actually not the business of the army. It's supposed to be handled by police. You remember, Charles, in those days, when there are riots, you know, issues of heightened insecurity or threats to peace or, uh, and order, you mobilize what they call the mobile police. I remember the mobile police. Yeah. And once they come in, even the villagers or the place where these issues are will be relaxed and mm -hmm. hopeful that, well, the mobile police is here, they will end it. And do you know that they normally go there without guns? They are buttoned and this, uh, what do they call it? A shield. A shield. Yeah. And their mobile, uh, in their helmets yeah. and all that. And that is what they use. And that time too, those that are engaged in the riot, they either use sticks, stone, or no, no, there was no AK-47. But today, you find AK-47 everywhere. Mm. And small kids, like the case of the insurgents, firing AK-47. I recently, I saw women too firing AK-47. Well, having you here, obviously, we're talking uh, quite a bit, we've done quite a bit on, on insecurity, but I also want to get your take, because obviously you're a politician, and uh, 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 quite a, a respected one at that, and uh, a senator in, in the National Assembly. What's your reaction to the allegation by the PDP presidential candidate, uh, Tiku Abubakar, that INEC is preparing to rig the election by saying that they're going to manually collate the results of the 2023 elections? Well, I, I really, as I said, I don't want to talk about personalities. But INEC is an independent electoral commission. And up to now, the INEC have actually proven to me mm. to be an impartial, uh, uh, you, you know, arbiter. arbiter, an electoral body. They've conducted elections severally during this government, under the government, and we lost elections. PDP won election. Roll this back. Even as at the time when Atiku was the vice president, do you remember any election under the watch of APC uh, PDP that any party won? It didn't. Well, I certainly remember 2015. The APC won, didn't they? Yes, that is it. I, I said that APC was not, right. it was a political revolution. What I'm saying is, during prior the, to that. Yeah, no, not prior to that. Right. During the government, you know, it was like turning things right. upside down that we came in. But what I'm saying is when PDP was in government and APA, uh, Atiku was the vice president. In fact, I remember sometimes if election is being to be conducted in a tough where APC is trying to take over. They will send Atiku to yeah, but the, but the bottom line this time, though, is that it's not really about what political parties. It's about respecting the will of the Nigerian people. The will of the Nigerian Who constitute the electorate. And what they're saying is that it was always at the collation point in the past, whether it's PDP or APC, when rigging took place. And therefore, if the, the INEC are saying that they, they, although they clarified it, they're saying that the results will be transmitted electronically, but INEC has the discretion when it comes to collation. You can see why people get a little bit nervous. That on. is some people anyway. I, 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 I absolutely have nothing. I've said it several times mm. before that because we made the law anyway, the changes in the... Act. Yes, absolutely. Ah, and that is because we want to improve on the electoral process. But that is not to provide some people glaring chance of taking advantage of what we did again. But, but is it a wait, good... Wait a chance, yeah, let me learn. Sure. In the local government where Atiku comes from, and he's from Adama, from Ganye, part of Ganye Jada, there are some areas that don't have network services there. Mm. Then how do you transmit election there? That's a good Are point. you saying that you are going to disenfranchise these people? The constitution is very clear that every Nigerian of, uh, at the age of uh, 18 that has registered must be given the chance to cast his vote. So, because you say you want electronic voting system, then you say that it is only through that. What the law, the act, the law says, and that is what INEC said, where it is practicable, then you use electronic 
transmission. But at the end of it, then why don't you do electronic voting? It won't work. An individual have to go there and cast his vote mm -hmm. because you need evidence that you will now use. And look, even in America, as advanced as they are, there is pulling, uh, 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 people go to the polling center. In the UK, are they doing electronic voting? Yeah, but it's, it's not about going to the polling center to vote manually. That is it, the first it's, thing. It's about whether or not the system is secure enough that there won't be any manipulation of those results. I mean, that's well, really well, the bottom well, line. Well, well, it's not about whether the si what, what well, type of voting well, there well, is. Well, well, Charles, let me clarify this to you. I've been in this business for a while. You certainly well, have. Yeah, but, um, but Atikui has been in the business more than myself because he's older. When he entered politics, up to this time, was his emergence Mm. by electronic voting, it was manual. So do we now say he was at this position or he won those elections through Reagan? Because it was not... Yeah, but it, as I said, well, it, it was it, not it's a, not about the politicians. No, it's about no, the let, will let, of let me, the Nigerian let, let me, people. Let me learn. Yeah, okay. I told you, like my local government that have been ravaged by insurgents, up to now, up to now that I'm speaking That's to That's in you, Borna State. Yeah. I cannot comfortably call my local government to talk to anybody. In fact, I cannot get into Meduguri be before, uh, after, after 5 o'clock in the evening. I cannot get into Meduguri. And you cannot move anywhere because of the security challenges and the precautions that are taken. Hmm. You understand? There is no network there. The insurgents have destroyed so many structures there. And you know, the network co coverage in this country too is not adequate enough. To say that, okay, you take this out. So that's why we say in the law that electronic voting or transmission where possible. Right. But it's a good thing that these concerns... Remember, remember. Yeah. Let me... I don't want... I still want to talk about what Atiku is saying. That makes me suspicious. <laughs> Why does that make you? Oh, I guess you're from the APC, aren't you? Yes. That's why you're so thick. No. <laughs> because, okay, you remember in 2019, he's, he had his own server. Yeah. And he was collecting his result. And he said he won. <laughs> so if I'm to collect my result, how can I lose? <laughs> But, but what I was going to say is that it's a good thing that these concerns have emerged now, isn't yeah. it? I mean, so it's important for INEC to redouble its efforts to be clear and sure that there is absolute transparency in this election. Yeah. So even if in those places where it has to do it, it must it's got to be completely above board. Yeah. We, and and, and, and uh, let me add that yeah. one thing, one good thing about Nigerians during the election process, especially in the so-called... I don't know, educated society, northwest, mm. uh, southwest, southeast. Mm. And, uh, well, if you are not popular, if the people, if you are not popular, you rig election day, you cannot survive it. Mm. Okay, let, let me quickly so get to wait, this because we are a politician. Yeah. What we do, or what you do, even if you are a smart politician, is you rig where you are popular. <laughs> <laughs> because, <laughs> well, thanks for letting us know. <laughs> yeah, because you can't start that in a place that they don't like you anyway. <laughs> That's a good point. We've got about a minute and a half, sadly, because it's brilliant talking with you. But you, I want to talk about what's happening inside the APC. I yeah. mean, you supported uh, Rotimi Amici, Amici yeah. at the APC primaries. He lost and Tinubu won. How much is your team working with Tinubu to try to move his presidential aspiration forward when we met with Tunubu after the election mm. uh, he came over to us and uh, asked us to work with him and we told him we'll work with him whenever he uh, he wants us to and uh, even though I was not around mm. uh, you know his DG now is also our top uh, one of our top a team in the Amici campaign group. Amici at uh, Lalong and Amici are very good friends. He supported us. He was one of our greatest supporters. Even though I was chairing the Amici campaign committee, we, we, were, we had it at the back of our mind that um, uh, uh, you know, uh, Lalong would have played the, mm. the top role in the campaign organization. And uh, so when the when the, when the uh, 
uh, Tunubu group appointed him as the DG. We had no objection, and it means we're going to work together. That's what we promised him. But, but they haven't approached you so far. No, not me personally. And actually, I, they, I mean your your sort of group. Well, I mean no, they have approached. I call Amici came to my Duguru to condole me right. over the death of my father. That was uh, when um, uh, Lalong was appointed, and I spoke with uh, Lalong too. And uh, I asked my principal, that is uh, uh, Amici, whether he was consulted. He said, uh, we, uh, the "Right." Group. So we. Uh, so there's a sense of unity there. Yeah, there is a sense of unity, and we are going to put uh, in more. We have some issues with mm. some people. The problem that we have in APC uh, is more more of an internal one not uh, that it had no it, it doesn't it doesn't have to do with the candidates that contested for the presidency that is not a right. big deal okay but it, we have problem at the lower level with those who wanted to be governors want to be right. senators okay. want to come you and that's still remember. creating problems yeah that is big problem okay uh, I, i'm really sorry about this i'd love to talk with you some more but we've got to make room for news night which is coming up immediately after us uh, senator ali ndume i want to thank you very much indeed lovely to see you and my condolences once again on the passing of your father thank you very much that's it for this edition of arise prime time join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in abuja Bye-bye and thank you for watching.